Go ahead with question number one. G question one A part one. This should be easy. And uh, sodium chloride plus sulfuric acid reacts to give N E H S O four plus H C L. Perfect. Actually, you can write both equations if you form the acidic salt N A H S O four, or if you form the complete salt N A two S O four. Uh, with either one mole of HCl or two moles of HCl, that's fine. But we do prefer that you go with any HSO4 since that's the starting equation. Well, even if you write the second one, that's not a problem. Okay, yeah, the type of reaction. This, this is something that comes as a little bit confusing. Yes, displacement. Okay, good. Moving on, part B, part one. Hydrochloric acid. Read the B part really carefully. This is the most common mistake students make. In part A, we were reacting sodium chloride with concentrated sulfuric acid. In part B, we are reacting sodium iodide. So how would it form hydrochloric acid? Make sense? Uh -huh. So the halide that we're going to use is uh, going to produce a hydrogen halide, of course, and that's for the steam, uh, steamy or fumy acids, the fumes are for, right? So and well, if you look at the examiner report, you'd see that most of the students who came up with the answer was hydrochloric acid, since they assumed without reading the first part of it that it was sodium chloride we were reacting to concentrated sulfuric acid with. Right. Okay, part two. Uh, and before you get to part two, Iman, it really is impossible to get to some any other time. This is the only solution I could come up with. So yeah, you probably have to manage with the recording. Okay, coming back to P part two.
So any idea about the dark gray solid? What's the color of H2S? Uh, hmm? H2S is a gas. Mm -hmm. Slightly yellowish, but you can't exactly give a color to it since we're talking about a solid, so it can't be H2S gas. And plus, you only need to name the other product. So, yeah, stating about anything about H2S gives you one mark, but you're still supposed to answer for the dark gray solid. Iodine? Iodine, right. Remember, this reaction is actually a little bit slow and uh, concentrated sulfuric acid is a very good oxidizing agent in the terms that it, it might be unable to uh, oxidize HCl, but it's definitely able to oxidize HBr and HI. And when it does so, uh, we get other products as well. So iodine is one of them. H2S is also a product like that. Okay. Now remember, you only needed to tell what one other product was. You never needed to tell what the appearance of that product was. Okay, part C. Now this should be easy. Purple vapors will form for uh, the reaction of sodium iodide. Right, and since it has two marks, uh, because because um, hydrogen iodide is a good uh, reducing agent. Um, actually, because I so consider sulfuric acid is a good oxidizing agent, so. It oxidizes hydrogen iodide and iodine gas is formed. Right, right, good. T part.
um bromine bromine will be formed sulfur dioxide will be formed and water right and we can and we'll put a two in front of br minus and h plus right and nothing for the sulfuric acid we can put a one okay good good that's good enough for this one okay let's see 2a Bromine is the oxidizing agent because its oxidation state has reduced. Good. Moving on. B part. Affirmations. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay, good. I wasn't thinking if uh, you would come up with this sense, but okay, fine. Yeah, that, that's good. Actually, uh, the most common perception is that the student, since we're talking about bromine, the student would most probably be talking about color changes. Color changes at the start of the reaction or by the end of the reaction. But usually we miss out on a pervescence. Even I miss out on a pervescence. So much so, I had to go back to the previous page and look up whether there was a gas forming in the product or not. So yeah, good, good. Okay, I mm -hmm. need to zoom it out a little bit. Okay, there you go. So C1 for now. Okay. Um, zero point one four seven and the units are mole d dm minus three and second inverse. Okay, and what exactly did you do for calculation? Um, I calculated the amount of bromine which was used up. It went from 100 to 4, 8, 12. 100 to 12, so 88 mole per dm cube was used up, and I divided that by the total time. 600, right? Yeah, 88 divided by 600. Uh, okay, it's 88 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of minus 5. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 10 raised to the power 5 or minus 5. It's minus. Okay, minus 5. 
it can be minus five. It can never be ten raised to the power five. You can't dissolve so much. Yeah, because it looks like it. a five from my side here. Yeah. Because this much of bromine, is, we are not capable of dissolving this much of bromine into water, no matter how much KBr we add to it. Yeah. It can never be 10 raised to power 5. So it must be 10 raised to power minus 5. So you were saying um, the units are? A mole, mole per dm cube per second. All right, that's correct. Okay. So. There you go, part two. Might want to read it and get back to the graph. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay. So okay, just to reassure, what you're trying to do is to start from the same point. Yeah, yeah. And end at and the same at point. point before, like a time before. And you're just trying to make the graph steeper, right? Yes, yeah, steeper and uh, bromine will be used up much more faster. So the time would be less. Makes sense. Good. Okay, let's clear it up. Let's see what we have in part three. Um, it increases the kinetic energy of the molecules so they move more rapidly and more molecules have energy greater than the activation energy okay good but uh, again the same point that i've been quoting previously instead of using more molecules the more number of molecules, proportion proportion right remember boltzmann distribution graph tells us something differently. It's not just about the number, it's about the proportion. Yeah. Okay. Let's not go with this. You already know how to do it. But I am going to ask you one question. How many lone pairs would be on the oxygen up top in this diagram? I repeat, how many oh, lone pairs would one be minute. on the oxygen up top in this diagram. Um, it will form a double bond, right? Uh, carbon dioxide on top one. Yes, it will form a double bond. Mm -hmm. A carbon oxygen double bond.
with one minute. I'm doing it kind of confused. Okay, take your time. Two long pairs. Good, that is correct. Two long pairs. Okay, question number three. Um, the force is the strength increases. All right, two, two is easy. Leave two, B part. B part, right? Right. Although this is also easy, uh, this is the same displacement direction we have been studying since IGCSC, but since this is the first time we're doing this question. That's why I'm, I'm going to go with this one. And on the upcoming pages, if this question is repeated, we're gonna skip it every time. Just for the sake of first one, let's do B part. So for chlorine, there would be no change. Mm -hmm. And for iodine, the solution changes to a red brown color. I think you need to review yourself. You're not doing it right. Actually, okay, neither of these is correct. Which, so for the first one, the solution changes to a red bumpler. Right. This time you correct. 
Yeah, I'm, I mixed up the reactivity. Okay. So definitely, I think you're going to get the second one right as well. Go ahead. Yeah, what about iodine? Iodine will be less reactive. So here, there will be no gene. Good. Go for the explanation. Um, since chlorine is more reactive than bromine, it will displace, it will... Mm. It will displace the bromine. It will right. displace the bromine from the solution of its aqueous bromide, and bromine and bromine will be formed. I forget the product. Just explain about the displacement, which we have already done for chlorine. What about iodine? Because you need to explain about both. Oxidize the bromide ions to form bromine, and itself it will be reduced to chloride ions. Can you repeat? Since uh, chlorine is a better oxidizing agent mm -hmm. than bromine, mm -hmm. it will oxidize the bromide ions to form bromine, and itself it will be reduced to chloride ions. Okay, just just explain the first part. What about the second one? Um, what about iodine, iodine as an oxidizing agent? Iodine is a weaker. Iodine is a weaker oxidizing agent than bromine, so it won't be able to displace the bromide ions. Okay, remember we only use the word displace bromine, chlorine, and fluorine. We use the convention is to use the original term for displacement and not for the name of time. So you don't say uh, that chlorine is capable of uh, displacing bromide ions. No, actually chlorine is uh, capable of displacing bromine. That's how we say it. It's a speaking and a writing convention, which everyone follows. Right. So we follow the same. All right, C. And the part C is from disproportionation reaction, probably the last topic in chapter number 17. And in this specific topic, we have a few equations that are really specific to uh, chlorine versus the reaction with sodium hydroxide in two different conditions, uh, with the cold dilute condition and with the hot concentrated condition. Since these equations are important, have been a uh, part of many past papers, so I ask my students to memorize both of the equations. I mean, both the condition-based equations. Um, so, it, okay, so chlorine plus two NaOH, and actually give NaCl plus NaClO plus water. Perfect, okay, so makes D1. Uh, proton acceptor. Good. Two. CLO minus plus H2O reacts to give HClO plus HO minus. OH minus. The oh, last yeah, one. OH minus. 
Yeah, 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 that is correct. Good. So, E. It's actually a little bit different one, but this is not difficult. So that this is different, but it's not difficult. Go through it once, you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right. Is it zero point two? I don't know, but go ahead with your calculation step by step. What did you do? Okay, so we have the volume of oxygen produced and we are calculating the concentration of NaClO. So first we find the number of moles of oxygen that reacted. So the formula used was Volume at RTP equal to number of moles times 24 dm cube. So number of moles of oxygen I got out to be 0 0.001. Uh -huh. And the ratio between NaClO and oxygen was one ratio one. So the moles of NaClO would also be 0 0.001. Okay. Then I divided this moles, which I got over, I converted the 5 cm cube to dm cube. So uh -huh. 0 0.001 divided by five or 1,000, which came out to be 0 0.2. Okay, but you do understand the 0 0.2 is just mass. Oh, concentration 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube. Right? Oh, okay, so I'll multiply this by the MR of exactly NACLO. until unless you multiply it with the MR of NACLO, you are not going to get mass concentration. 
you'll still be stuck um, at molar concentration. All right. Whose so units are not mentioned in the answer? Okay, so it's coming out to be around 15. Okay, it seems right. If you're doing it with the correct arm MR, it should be right. Yeah. I don't know, but you may recheck the answer at the end of the book after. Okay. Yeah. But it sounds right. So let's move on to F part. How do we know the products? I didn't get it. What did you say? How do we know the products? So how would you think um, oxidation would be complete by the conditions given above. But we need to know the products, right, for it, because this is the product which contain green, after having specific oxidation number minus one or zero. So? So either it could be chlorine gas or like NaCl. So what's the problem for? If you already can think of the correct products, what's the problem about this one? It's just that you can't write the complete equation. You have to write the ionic equation. So considering the products that you have on mind, what do you think the, the fill in the blanks would be filled with? Now that it's a big hint that your answers are already correct. Come on, this should be easy. As you said yeah, earlier. Okay. okay, if you're doing it, go ahead. So ClO minus plus 2HCl 
reacts to give chlorine gas, chlorine uh -huh. plus water uh -huh. plus chloride ion. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. This actually conforms with every condition written above. Yeah. Since you can oxidize uh, HCl and we do understand that it would nothing would happen to H, it would only be Cl changing, which they have clearly mentioned chlorine species with oxidation number minus one to zero. So it can either be Cl negative or it can be Cl2 as a molecule of chlorine. So that easily tells us what we are supposed to do. So number four. Um, the volatility volatility decreases because the id id forces are getting stronger due to the increasing number of electrons All right, what do you think? The first part? No, second. We done first. Because it has the greatest bond length. So less energy is required to break the bond. Right. 
great bond length, low bond enthalpy, or low bond energy. These are the terms that we can use. Moving on, three. And let's see the whole question. There you go. Because hydrogen bonding exists in hydrogen fluoride and it requires more energy to break the hydrogen bonds than it takes to overcome the wonder of forces in hydrogen iodide. All right, four. This time the difference is what I was talking about in the previous question. Two different equations of any halogen with sodium hydroxide, though our book specifically gives equations for chlorine and sodium hydroxide, but for any halogen under two different conditions, hot aqueous sodium hydroxide, which is hot concentrated actually, or cold dilute, we have two different equations to memorize. So uh, if I ask you not the whole set of products, but the different product from the previous equation, what would that be? So instead of NaClO, we would have NaIO. That was I mean, cold I mean, dilute. I mean, this one is hot concentrated. You know, it would be NaIO plus NaIO3, and then we'll have water. The first product is not correct. We'll have uh, sodium iodide. Uh -huh. And instead of NaClO3, we'll have NaIO3. Now you're right. So it's NaI, NaIO3, and water. Okay. Yeah, and water. And water. That's correct. Okay. I think we 